Some call the Wild Hermit West the land of opportunity, and for those who are brave enough, the promise of wealth beyond imagination is born with every sunrise. But in Dead Dog Gulch, Sheriff Wren the Kid knows the truth. What kind of a world do we live in where a man can't even prosper on his own land? Is nothing sacred in these dark canyons? There's no other choice. The law must be obeyed. Twenty-five diamonds for the head of our beef thief Jevin and the safe return of the stolen bovine. And if it takes blood to do justice in the wild hermit west, then so shall it be. Ren the Kid, if you want to see Pamela alive again, bring 100 diamonds to the Mushroom Island one week from now. Or she becomes steak! My dudes, Pamela's been cow-napped! Sandy Cat, I got bad news for you, girl. Your best friend, Pam. She's been kidnapped by the freaking beef thief. Yes, that's right. She's gone. Oh, man. Wait, wait a minute. Sandy Cat, weren't you chilling right here on the beach bathing in the sun when the kidnapping happened? You witnessed everything and you did nothing? Oh, Sandy Cat, how could you do this to us, baby? Welcome back to Loser Island, Cyber Dogs, and it is a day of mourning for the Ren Diggity Dog on the Hermitcraft server today. Pamela's gone. What the freaking heck, man? I logged onto the server this morning and noticed that this boat that was previously holding a very poopy bovine is now empty. And I thought Pam had maybe despawned or something. And then I noticed this. And I also noticed a post on Twitter from my good friend, iJevin. And guys, iJevin, the beef thief, has put a bounty on the head of Pam. Oh man, this is not the way that I wanted to start today's episode. But you know what? It's going to be kind of fun. I have a plan to get Pam back. It's not going to be involving 100 diamonds though, guys. Because, well, I don't have 100 diamonds. And also, still on zero deaths. Oh baby. Well, it looks like we're kicking off today's episode. Trying to find a way to get Pam back, guys. And I have just had a very sneaky plan for the recovery of our favorite bovine. Just been down into our branch mine. I've picked up our 53 diamonds. These are all the diamonds we have in the world right now. And we're going to head over to the community Mushroom Island central little thing here on the server. Because over the last week or so here on Hermitcraft Season 7, things have been kicking off on this island. And well, even though I probably should be saving my diamonds to rescue Pam, I can't help myself, guys. If there are some shops on the Mushroom Island worth spending some diamonds in, I'ma do it, baby. Let's go see what the hermits have been up to. Oh my goodness, guys. The hermits have been grinding something fierce on the Mushroom Island, man. Jeez, look at this place. There's shops left, right, and center. This looks like a slime shop of some kind, and that's definitely got Eskel written all over it, doesn't it? That looks absolutely awesome. This looks like an enchanted bookshop or something. Oh, baby, we might be able to get some mending out of that sucker. We've also got some nether portals in the center of the island, which is going to be very handy for travel. Oh, and over there is Vintage B. Beef's Bone Zone mini game. I actually got to play the game with Beef a couple of days ago. All right, how much you want to wager? I only have six diamonds. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a total <laughs> of fifteen. Okay, let's do. Let's go with. Let's go with five. It'll leave me one if I lose. Five. Okay. Yeah. Is that too much? <laughs> no, no. Let's go. Uh, I, I can't Listen, resist. If you this. win, you're doubling your. <laughs> yeah. Your, your input. And th that means I can buy my first plot out here too. So that's good. Oh, I hope you win then. I'm, I'm rooting for you, Ren. I feel like this game needs a jingle or something, you know? I know. It's I should like... add some note blocks or something. Welcome oh. to the Bone Zone. Bone Zone. <laughs> this is kind of like a, a snail race. Did you ever have a snail race when you were a yeah. kid? Um, maybe I can entice them like with a bone. Yo, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, go get the bone. Come on, guys. You know you want the bone action. Get your hooves out of the yellow, you <laughs> stinking sheep idiot. Bone zone. Final oh, battle. No. Fight. No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I love Nicely you, sheep. Done. Where are you? Oh, I want to give him a kiss. Oh, you are so beautiful. <laughs> there, there's, there's no way out of there. What? You're in there now. Oh. Hmm. Do you have an end? Do you have an end pearl? 
<laughs> I don't. Okay, first up is the bookshop. What is for sale up in this business? Ooh, mending. Nice. Special offer. Mending books, five diamonds per book. Don't mind if I do. Uh, oh. It's sold out, and somebody has made an insane profit. Dudes, we need to get a shop on this freaking Mushroom Island ASAP, man. These hermits are getting rich, and we are dirt poor and cow napped. Man, this slime shop is so sweet, dude. 32 slime balls for a diamond. Well, I don't actually know if I need slime at the moment, but you know what? We'll buy half a stack just in case. You never know when you might need a sticky piston, am I right? Oh, this is very useful indeed, guys. It is Impulse's bedrock breaking service, and for 10 diamonds, he will break a block of bedrock where we need him to do so. If you guys don't know, here in Season 7, for the first part of the season, we are going to be traveling on the roof of the nether, and, well, I have no idea how to get up onto the roof of the nether. So it looks like we got another task for today. We're going to set up our first nether portal and then I guess hire impulse to put it on the roof. Okay, this has got to be the cutest shop in the district so far, guys. Look at this little bee. Oh, he's so adorable. Goat mending. Best book deals. Well, we couldn't find mending at the other shop, so it looks like we might have to buy mending from the goat. One diamond block, one mending book. Diamond block into chest plus ridiculously cute bee. Goatman Doc, you sold me, my dude. Take my diamonds. Oh, this is actually perfect, guys. Last episode, we made Pixcalibur the first, didn't we? And as you can see, Pixcalibur is about to die. And getting a mending book onto Pixcalibur is a priority. So, Doc, I want a mending book for a block of diamonds. Oh, geez, rip profits, but this is definitely going to be worth it. Oh, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Mending in the belly. Oh, so this is what everybody's been going on about with the new Mushroom Shopping District, guys. Check this out. This is a message from Iskel85, and it says, Dear Hermits, I hereby suggest that in order to build a shop, you pay for the land you use by putting diamond blocks here. The pricing is 100 blocks on the X and Z, free Y space for one diamond block. No Note, this is only a suggestion, not mandatory. Okay, let me take a minute to explain what's going on here, guys. Us hermits have been chatting off camera on Discord over the last week or so about a way for us to manage the land here on the shopping district for season number seven. What we as a group have now decided to do after this amazing suggestion by Iskal is to purchase land from the server using a block of diamond for a 10 by 10 area. So here you can see Cub has purchased a 10 by 10. It looks like somebody has purchased a huge amount of land over here and the way to buy land here on the Mushroom Island is to put a block of diamonds into the center here and then go choose for yourself a 10 by 10 for every block of diamonds that we spend. Well, after throwing some diamonds at a bee and buying some slimage, we have got four diamond blocks left. That means we can get four 10 by 10 areas on the Mushroom Island, guys. That is not a lot of space, but you know what? We're gonna do it. We need to get ourselves secure here on the island. So one, two, three, four. Right, that purchases us a 40 by 40 block area on the Mushroom Island, guys. And I think we need to be a little bit smart with our land purchase for this season, okay? If you were here last episode, you will know that here on the server, we are going to be starting a log business. And we're gonna be calling it Bigger Logs Incorporated. Now, last episode, we started working on the bone meal side of our log factory and I'm thinking it might be quite smart for us to purchase a little bit of land all the way at the end of the Mushroom Island over here. That way when we get our log factory up and running we can actually automatically transport the logs via the ocean here directly into our shop, right? Boom baby! Our very first bit of land purchased on Season 7 for the construction site of Bigger Logs Incorporated. Oh, I can smell the diamonds already, my dudes. And you know what guys, even though I have now spent most of my diamonds to buy this very small little bit of land on the island, I really love this idea that Iskal has had, right? Not only is this going to be a great way for us hermits to keep our shopping district nice and neat this season, but there is an amazing feeling that comes along with buying a bit of land on the island. You know, this little setup we have here, these four 10 by 10 blocks that we've purchased, this is ours. It belongs to us. We are going to be setting up our business here, making some bling blangs from the loggage action. And it looks like all of my fellow hermits are on board with it too. So this is going to be a great season for the shopping district, guys. Okay, back to reality, cyberdiggity dogs. Our beautiful bovine friend, Pamela has been cow-napped by I. Jevon, the beef thief. 
and we need to figure out a way to get her back because, well, we just spent all of our diamonds and there's no ways I am paying Jevin 100 diamonds for the return of Pamela. So, I've had a chat with Ren the Kid, Sheriff of Dead Dog Gulch, and together we have come up with the plan to get Pamela back from I Beef Thief Jevin. Here's how it's going to work, guys. Jevin is wanted dead or alive for the thievery of an innocent bovine. The reward is 25 diamonds for the return of Pamela the Mushroom and for the delivery of Jevin's bloody head to Ren the Kit. So the plan here, guys, is to get one of the other hermits to do our dirty work for us. We are not going to risk our life for PvP. We're going to win the game of life on this server. And of course, we are going to get Pamela back at a discount price. Instead of 100 diamonds for the return, it's going to cost us 25 diamonds. And most importantly, we all get to watch another one of our fellow hermits hunt down and hopefully recover Pamela from Jevon. That is entertainment worth spending 25 diamonds on. Am I right? Right, after that very fun skelly grinding session, we should have enough XP to get this mending book onto Pixcalibur. And on top of that, check this out guys, I got super lucky with the Fortune 3 Efficiency 4 pickaxe off camera the other day. And that means we'll be able to get our very first Efficiency 5 mending diamond pickaxe. Although I think we probably can get it for a little bit cheaper over here if we swap these around. Yeah, there we go, 17 XP for that one, beautiful. Can we stick the mending book on it? Yes! Pixcalibur. Excalibur the second, Efficiency 5, Fortune 3, Unbreaking and Mending. Ladies, I get in line, baby. Oh, we be cooking with gas today, Zabba Dogs. Things are coming along quite nicely here in Season 7. Now that we got mending on our pickaxe, we can use our skeleton grinder to repair it and farm bone meal for our tree factory at the same time. Now, I've made some pretty sweet improvements to our grinder since the last episode, and here's how it works. The spawner below is constantly triggered while we are standing in the grinding position on the surface and the skeletons are then transported to us via a series of bubble vapor pipes and water streams. Once they arrive in the kill chamber, we can then grind them down to bits and gather their XP and bones safely from the outside. And just like that, we're back up to level 30, Pixcalibur is fully repaired and we have an insane amount of bonage stored up in our skeleton farm. Now dudes, this thing is pretty sweet, I know, very useful to have something like this in the early game of Minecraft, but there are a lot of improvements that we can make to this thing, and guys, I want to spend the rest of this episode taking this grinder to the next level. Check this out. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to our shiny new Season 7 sketch world. This is, of course, a creative flat world and is the place where I'm going to be doing all of my sketching for the season. And as you can see, I've already got a couple of ideas thrown up here. This is our beautiful house on Loser Island. Here is the Dead Dog Gulch Saloon. And right here is my idea for our skeleton spawner today, guys. Not only is this going to be a skeleton grinder, but it is also going to be a beautiful Wild West inspired water tower. And the way this thing works is very, very simple. The skeletons are going to spawn down below. They're going to get transported up the water pipe into the water cooler. Inside of the water cooler, they will get flushed into a drop chute and that is going to make them take almost maximum damage when they land in the kill chamber. This means that when we're grinding the skeletons, all we'll need to do is hit them once to kill them and that is going to save a lot of durability on our swords and will allow us to get through the skeletons in a much quicker and more efficient way. Let's switch to hard mode real quick so I can show you exactly how this thing is going to work. Of course, the skeletons are going to spawn in the spawning chamber below and they will get pushed up the water pipe all the way to the top of the water tower. Let's get quite a few skeletons spawned here and maybe we can catch them in the water tower. Yep, there they go. They come across, they get flushed down to the bottom and they'll land here in the kill zone. That means, of course, to maximize on the fall damage, we'll need to make this tower about 20 blocks high or so. But that's not a problem, guys. Let's head back to the Herbicraft server and get this bad boy installed. Now the most challenging part about a technical mob grinder like this is usually the water streams that deliver the mobs to the kill chamber. Luckily though, since the introduction of the bubble vator in Minecraft 1.14 Aquatic, it's much easier now to move mobs upwards, just as long as you make sure that your vertical bubble vators are all solid water sources. The other important thing to remember about a technical mob grinder like this is to make sure you don't get your mobs to fall too far. They need to fall 22 blocks in order to land in the kill chamber on half a heart 
and that is exactly where you want them. With one swipe of a sword, you'll be able to kill a whole bunch of them at the bottom of your spawner. And of course, the most important thing about technical builds for me is to ensure that whatever we do in Minecraft when it comes to redstone or technical stuff, we make it look as aesthetically pleasing as possible. None of these janky cobblestone redstone contraptions for skelly spawners. Oh no, baby. When we do redstone and technical stuff in Minecraft on this channel, the looks of the farm always comes first over the function. Oh, and I also wanted to mention that the inspiration for this water tower skelly grinder actually came from a comment on my second episode. So please guys, if you have any amazing ideas while watching this series, do not hesitate to get them in the comments. I read as many of the comments as I can, and I actually get a ton of inspiration for my series from the comments on my videos, guys. So please, don't be shy. Get those ideas flowing, baby, because look what happens. We make awesome stuff on the Hermacraft server, have a lot of fun doing it, and at the end of the day, it's win-win, really. A few hours of hard survival Minecraft grind later, and our Skelly Grinder water tower build is looking absolutely magnificent over there in the Mesa skyline. I'm really happy with how this build has turned out, guys. I think it looks absolutely magnificent, especially for an early Minecraft build. Not only that, I'm hoping that a lot of the hermits on the server with Elytra will spot this tower from a distance while they're flying around. I think we got a decent opportunity here to make some diamonds with this bad boy. Property of Bigger Logs Incorporated, a price per session, five diamonds. Now, I'm not sure anybody's actually gonna use this thing, but if they do, we might make a couple of bucks from this bad boy. Last step, of course, is to make sure that this thing is actually working. I've spent the entire day today working on the bubble vators and water aqueducts and whatnot. I disabled the skelly spawner while I was working on this thing today, so let's get rid of these torches, patch up our spawning chamber, and let's make sure this thing actually works, especially if we're gonna be charging five diamonds per session. Oh, and before I forget, and while we're out here, guys, let's go check in at Dead Dog Gulch. I would like to check in the saloon if a couple of wages have been placed on the game of life since we got it going last episode. And there's actually something really sweet that I want to show you that we did on live stream this weekend. This little number right here is the brand new sheriff station for Dead Dogs Gulch. I realized that Ren the Kid doesn't actually have a place to live here in the town. I mean, he could live in the saloon, but that's probably not recommended. <laughs> He'd probably end up sleeping in the corner for most of the time. So instead, on live stream this weekend, we threw up a little fortified sheriff station for Ren the Kid. And it actually turned out pretty sweet. Inside, we've got a rather smelly jail cell that, let's be honest, has I Beef Thief Jevin's name all over it. And once Ren the Kid gets his hands on Jev's, he's probably going to end up in here. Other than that, there's nothing too fancy going on with this build, but I do really love the fact that the Dead Dog Gulch town is slowly but surely getting some more buildings in it. We'll be doing most of the work for this project on my live streams, guys, so if you want to come and see this Wild West town slowly but surely build up, come and join us for some live stream action, man. It's pretty sweet. We've got one more thing to check while we're out here, guys. The Game of Life Wages. It's been about a week or so since we set up the challenge. I wonder how many Zero Death Hermits are brave enough to challenge Ren the Kid in the game of life. Well, let's take a quick peek in the chest over here, guys. Oh, yes, it is on. We got some wages over here. This is my wager of 10 diamonds. This is 15 diamonds from Bizuma. And I'm assuming this is 20 diamonds, yes, from Doc Goat Holiday. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the highest wager in the game of life is 20. That means that Izuma and myself, we're going to have to match Doc's bid over here. And that means whoever wins the game of life on the server is getting 60 diamonds in the belly. That's going to have to wait for next episode though, guys. But their invites to a showdown in the saloon are in the mail. Ah, uh, nothing quite like ending a hard day of Minecrafting with some legitimate fishing off the pier. What a glorious sunset here at Loser Island. And unfortunately though, I have not had a lot of luck fishing. According to my statistics, I have caught 545 things with my Lure 3 and Luck of the Sea freaking fishing rod. I am still yet to yank a mending book out of this ocean though, guys. But I'm not going to stop fishing until I get a mending book out of the Hermiatic Ocean. This is one of my goals for Season 6, and I think I'm going to need a little bit of help on the luck side of things. Now, while I was fishing the other day, I got a pretty weird message from Scar. He told me that he might have a little something-something to help with my luck here on the fishing front. I'm mildly skeptical though, considering Scar lives in a giant snail, but it's probably worth going to check out, especially considering that all I can catch these days are freaking lily pads. Hello, Ren. Oh. 
Skardolf the Grey. Hey. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm going to keep that. Welcome to uh, the jungle here. Yeah, you called me over. Dude, I I'm mm -hmm. having such bad luck fishing, man. I, I mean, I'm assuming you've learned some new trick with fishing. I, I had to come like a thousand blocks to get here, dude. I, I hope you've got some new technique for me. I mean, I've got the salmon head on for luck. It's not working. It, I mean, I'm, I'm just watching getting, you I just, just got a, a puffer fish. in cod. That dude. is some sad stuff right there. Yeah. So I'm fishing legit this season. I'm assuming you've come up with some like new technique or something. So fill me in. Oh, yeah, Probably yeah. So I lured you here. I mean, I brought you here because I have something that will help you. So oh. it's something that I've been helping all the hermits with. And it's something I try to give back to the hermits a little bit. Hold on. Magic. Is this the, the crystal nonsense that you've been trying to sell, dude? These are magically proven items. Uh. I, I can't say scientifically, you know, some rules and stuff, but they're magically proven. Results vary. Well... <laughs> Yeah, this one is looking quite magical. Lucky magical Thank crystal. You. Okay. So here, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Let okay. me grab out one of these. Oh, yeah. I can feel the power. What's okay. it going to hurt to hold it in your hand? Maybe it'll help. Maybe it won't help. Okay. Uh, do I just pick it up? Is there like a... Just pick it up. Okay. No no need for fuss. Ooh. Mm. Dude, I'm kind of tingling in places I shouldn't be tingling right now, man. This is... It's kind of weird. So this is one diamond. And as I said, results are unproven with this, but I'm going to give it to you at a super good deal at one diamond. One diamond? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been catching cod all day. I I'm literally at this point ready to try anything, my dude. Like literally anything. Buying a piece of glass from a very weird looking wizard man is going to help me catch a mending book. Then I guess it's probably worth it I, I honestly what what could hurt really it's it's just a beautiful crystal in the end of the day okay well yeah i'm, I'm willing to try anything take take my money dude take my money I've, <sighs> I've i'm gonna give it a go um but, here's the deal if yeah. it doesn't work there's no refunds but at least you tried before you go dude i just are, are you okay scar my friend are, are you okay dude Oh yeah, oh, you're, you're probably talking about the beard. Yeah, I I forgot to bring my razor from season six. Yeah. And it's been growing like crazy, but it does fit the persona. So Ren, enjoy yeah. your crystal. Have a good time out there in the uh, in the swamps. Ow, ow, oh, that's very, oh, that hurt. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ow, you live in a snail. You look like a maniac. It's a good thing I have a healing crystal. Oh, I'm good now. Let me know if you need some help, Scar, okay? I'm worried about you, friend. But thanks for the piece of glass, right? Oh, no problem. Make yeah. sure you use your sunscreen. Okay. Bye.